If you have your Bibles, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Samuel. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, 1 Samuel. We're going to start reading in verse number 1. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Before we read, let's pray this prayer together. Say, Dear Lord, open my eyes and stop my ears and prepare my heart to receive a word from you. I'll never be the same again because of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I, I preached um, in this jacket during the 730 service, and I've already received several different inquiries about what the year 1977 stands for. What does it mean? It's just a designer on the jacket. And people are saying, is that the year? And I was born in 1972. That's the year that Bishop came to Boston. In a few short months, I'll be celebrating 50 years of life. The, the date on the back of his jacket has nothing to do with anything pertaining to Jubilee. It's just a designer jacket, fear of God. It's the 1977 collection, and praise the Lord. So, sorry. <laughs> if I caused anyone to be like, what does that mean? All right, the word of the Lord. First Samuel chapter number one. There was a certain man from... Ramanthium, a Zephite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeraham, the son of Elohu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zeph, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year. Turn to your neighbor and say, year after year. Turn to your other neighbor and say, year after year. And Sunday after Sunday. And this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of he would give portions of meat to his wife Penina and to all of her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion. Someone say a double portion. Because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Someone say, how did she do that? She didn't grow up in Roxbury. She didn't grow up in Brockton. Y'all would have punched someone. And um, let, me, let me stop. Year, this went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and she would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? And her answer was, no, you don't. <laughs> I want a son. So you aren't doing it for me, Elkanah. I need a son. Once when they were finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Turn your neighbor and say, something happens when a mother stands up. <laughs> I've been in that situation where I was there. I was somewhere with my mother and my mother stood up. Does anyone have a mother that stood up and said, okay, enough is enough. 
son, you stay here. I got to go talk to Mr. Good Game, the admissions office at Morehouse College, because you're going to graduate this year. My mother stood up. Does anyone have a mother? You got someone that, that, that has your back. You, you have the type of mother that sees beyond your faults and sees your destiny and sees your potential. I, I'm looking for just 10 mothers that know that they can stand up and they have an authority to speak something in the earth that it looks like it's not even possible have you ever been watching the news and you see a story of of someone that has done like the most heinous crime in the entire world and then they interview the mother and the mother's like no 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 my baby he's so special he just he's just one of a kind and and I just, I just know that he would never do this. And, and he's going to be the president one day. And you're looking at this mother like, what? <laughs> Something about the love of a mother. You know you can be a mother before you have children. You know you are pregnant with a dream before you are pregnant with a child. Hannah. Bishop stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me. Someone say, remember me. If you would only look on your servant's misery and remember me and do not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying, the Lord, praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart. Her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Man, that must have been a heavy prayer. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. No, not so, my Lord. Hannah replied, I am a woman who was deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of great anguish and grief. And Eli answered, go in peace. Turn to your neighbor and say, go in peace. May the Lord, the God of Israel, grant you what you asked of him. There is power in your prayers. She said, May the Lord find favor in your eyes. She went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning she arose. She worshiped before the Lord and then went back to her home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Jesus. Someone say, and the Lord remembered her can someone say lord can you remember me while on others thou art calling do not pass me by lord remember me lord remember my prayer lord remember my plea lord remember me And the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. And she named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. The title of my message uh, this morning is uh, The Power of a Praying Mother. The Power of a Praying Mother. Now, now take your seat. Now take your seat. Now take your seat. Because we have learned 
learned over the last few Sundays that we are seated in heavenly places with him. That there is a heavenly realm that the Lord has provided for you. You did not earn it. You did not discern it. Did not deserve it. It is the heavenly realm. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm seated in heavenly places with him far above all sickness and principalities and, and fear and oppression and depression. And Hannah knew her place in the heavenly realms. It's the reason why she had the confidence, uh, Phil, to go to the temple year after year. It's the reason why you show up to Jubilee Sunday after Sunday because you know that there's a supernatural anointing that is connected to your faith that unlocks the windows of heaven and you mother you grandmother you surrogate mother you foster mother there is power in your prayers because you are seated in heavenly places. But, but don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Because now that you have your seat in heaven, now you must recognize, and we talked about this last Sunday, that there is an anointing that the Lord has released in you to take your authority on the earth, in the earth. And that anointing is painful. So Hannah had an anointing for the miraculous. Ha, Hannah had an anointing to believe that God would do something that he promised that he would do even though it didn't look like it would ever happen. In the midst of insurmountable odds, in the midst of divine irritation, in the midst of this other woman that was irritating her and getting on her last nerve, I want you to hear me, year after year, she kept on praying. Year after year, she kept on believing. Year after year, she determined that she would not give up until the promise came to fruition. She learned the importance of how to trust God even in the middle of a fight, even in the middle of a storm, even in the middle of the fire. She was a mother, although she had no children. Because you are pregnant with a dream. You are pregnant with an idea. You are pregnant with a business. You are pregnant with a ministry. You are pregnant with this gift that the Lord wants to release to you and wants to use you to birth something into the earth. Even before you have natural children, the Lord has already positioned you to have spiritual children. Even before you have natural children, the Lord gives you the opportunity to have some God children. Are there any God mothers in this room? Are there any mothers of Zion in this room? You, you may not have your natural child. You don't have it yet. But there is a spiritual child that the Lord has given you permission and the opportunity to pour into their lives. And the reason why you're still here and the reason why you're still in your right mind and the reason why you haven't smacked somebody like Hannah should have is because you know that there is something that God is working in you. You know there is something that God is doing in you because that anointing will cost you something so you are in heaven 
in the heavenly realms, but you are anointed to go through some troubles on the earth. And I'm here to remind someone that trouble don't last always. I know many of you are saying, well, how long will I have to wait? How long do I have to stay here? How long is this pain going to be? How long am I going to have to toil in this situation? How long? And many of you are about to throw in the towel. You're about to give up. And I'm so glad that you too in I'm so glad that you're here this morning I'm so glad that you decided to come to church because I'm here to remind someone that weeping may endure for the night but your Samuel is coming your breakthrough is coming your miracle is coming what did Hannah do in the midst of seemed as though insurmountable odds she was seated in heavenly places and she was in the earth but what she decided to do is what every mother in this room I'm praying that she would do <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say it's time to stand up Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's time to stand up. <laughs> it's time for you to take another seat. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time for you to change your seat. It, it, it's, it's time for you to realize that there's another seat that God has prepared for you. There's another place that God has prepared for you. There's another dimension that God has prepared for you. You're seated in heavenly realms. You're anointed to go through something on the earth. But the Lord wants you to stand up and he wants you to take your seat in the middle seat. Pastor, what is the middle seat? I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. It's the seat of a praying mother. It's the seat of intercession. It's a seat where, Pastor Sophie, you are in the middle of heaven and the earth. You are in the middle of pulling something from heaven and you are close to heaven but you're also close to the manifestation in the earth I'm here to let someone know that you are much closer than you think that you are as long as you take your seat it's a seat of intercession it's a seat of travail it's a seat where you pray until something happens it's a seat where you say Lord I'm going to stay right here I'm going to rock right here. Sometimes you pray and your mouth is moving, but no, no words come out of your mouth because it's a heart prayer. And Hannah stood up and she took her place in the middle seat, in the seat of intercession. And in the middle of her prayer, she heard in the spirit, your Samuel is coming. Don't stop praying. Your Samuel is coming. Don't stop praying. Your Samuel is coming. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't stop praying until you see what you heard. You're in the middle seat. It's an uncomfortable seat. You're in the middle seat. It's a powerful seat. You're in the seat of intercession. You're in the seat where you will stay right here. I will stay right here until you bless me. Until you bless my children. Until you open my womb. Until you bless my ministry. Until you open the windows of heaven. I'm staying right here in the middle seat. I will pray. I will wait while I'm praying. I will wait. I will worship. I will weep. I will warfare. I'm too close to heaven and I see my Samuel in the spirit.
because the power of a praying mother is a praying mother pulls their children from heaven. Yeah. Sister T preached this a few Sundays ago, that your children are in heaven. Jeremiah chapter 1, before I for formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Which means that you are already a thought in heaven. There needed to be someone that took the middle seat, that pulled Samuel from heaven. And we don't know, Dad, how many years she sat in the middle seat. We don't know. All we know is that one day she stood up and she got in the seat of intercession. And she made a vow. What vow have you made? Not a promise. A vow. A covenant vow. It says, Lord... If you fulfill this promise, I will do this. Hannah, in that sacred moment, said, Lord, if you give me a son. She's in the middle city. If you give me a son, I will give him back to you. It reminds me of Luke chapter number 18. And I don't have time to turn to it, but you can just jot down this reference it reminds me of the parable of the persistent widow at the end of the pericope of luke chapter 18 verses 1 verse number 8 to 9 we see that the lord says something this type of faith this type of persistence i have never seen in all of the earth because there's something about the persistence of your prayers there's something about the power of your prayers there's something about the the pointing of your prayers to pray strategically and Hannah's now in the middle seat and she vows, Lord, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. So the text says, over the course of time, the Lord remembered her. <laughs> Mothers, I want you just to close your eyes and think of all of the Samuels, not just your children, but all of the things that the Lord has done for you, for all the doors that he's opened, all the ways that he's made, all the prayers that he answered. You may not have what you want right now, but you have everything that you need because the Lord has heard your prayers and he has responded to your petition. And now Hannah is in the middle seat, but then the text says that she lays with Elkanah and the Lord remembers her. And now she is back on earth. But now she's cradling her newborn son. He has, she has been blessed with the promise. And mothers, I'm aware that you have an incredibly important and so very challenging job as the Lord has selected you to be stewards over these incredible gifts that the Lord has placed within the earth. But I want you to know that your job is not done because now Hannah is holding her Samuel. And now 
the text says that now she has to wean this boy. The Jewish tradition to wean a child, it happened anywhere between 18 months and four years. And so now she had to prepare her promised son to be brought back to the house of God. I thought about this mom over and over again. How did Hannah do that? How was that even possible? Year after year, Sam, she's been waiting. And now the Lord has answered her prayer. She's holding the manifestation of the promise in her hands. She is weaning him. She is feeding him. She is preparing him. How in the world did she fulfill that vow? The only answer that I can think of is that she had to get back up. She had to get back up. And she had to place herself back in the middle seat. Because now she's in a position where she's called Samuel from heaven to the earth. But now, as a mother and a praying mother, she must now pray her son and bring her son back to heaven. And she had to present her son. Samuel, and bring him to the house of God. I can imagine that as, as Samuel was walking, now he's four or five years old, he's able to talk, he's able to communicate, he's well aware of what is happening. He's never been to the temple before because when Elkanah and Penina would go up to the temple. The text says that Hannah would stay back to prepare Samuel. So he doesn't know about the temple. He doesn't know what is about to happen. He doesn't know where he's going. And Hannah, but now she's back in the middle seat because she's saying, Lord, I don't know if I can do this in my own strength. Lord, Lord, you blessed me with this son, but, but now he's out in the street acting crazy. You blessed me with this daughter, and she's, she's out there doing her own thing. Now, Lord, I don't, I don't know if I can do this in my own strength, Lord. I, and I, 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 my, half of my job is done. There's still more that I got to do. I got I to gotta now take this boy, and I got to bring him back to you. I can imagine that when she carried him, she walking with him, she opens the door of the temple. She goes in. She spends some time with, with Eli and with Samuel, and now she's leaving. I imagine the door closed, and she can hear Samuel in the background, Mommy! Why are you leaving me? Mom! You're, you're all I've known. Where, where are you going? I can imagine that moment, Hannah, as she's walking back, she's in the middle seat because in her natural self, she'd go back and get her child. Just like when Penina was bothering her in her natural self, she would have smacked someone, but she got in the middle seat. Sometimes, mother, you got to get in the middle seat. Sometimes you have to say, Lord, I don't know how. Lord, I don't know when. Lord, I don't know when you're going to do this, but I trust you. Lord, I don't know how. Lord, I don't know when, but Lord, I trust you. Lord, I don't know how you're going to open the door. Lord, I I don't know how you're going to make a way, but I trust you. Lord, I don't know how you're going to save my daughter. I don't know how you're going to save my son, but I trust you. You trust me with this child, and now he's on the earth. But Lord, I got to bring him back to you. And so Hannah, like many of us, we bring our children and we lay them on the altar and we say, Lord, <laughs> thank you for this gift. 
but now I give him back to you. And the Lord literally just sent me here on assignment to pray for every mother, to pray for every grandmother that is believing and trusting that the Lord will bring their children back to the house of God. Every mother stand in this sacred room. Every mother, every grandmother, every future mother stand in this room. And if you're here in this room, hear me. This is a prophetic moment. It's a supernatural moment. If you're here in this room and you're believing God, you're believing God that your children will be saved, that your grandchildren will be saved. If you're believing God and trusting God, that God who has entrusted you with these children, now there is a responsibility and an opportunity that you have to take your place in the middle seat, one of an intercessor. I want to pray for you. Meet me right here at this altar. Every mother, every grandmother, you're believing God for your, your son, your daughter. I saw this moment. I prayed for this moment. I want you to know that something supernatural is happening in the heavens. I'm going to pray a very specific prayer. I'm praying that the Lord will give you the spirit of an intercessor. That you will find your your posture and your place in the middle seat. You've called your children from heaven to earth and now it's time to pray your children from earth back to heaven. Because tomorrow is not promised to you or to your children. How do you not know that this is the day, the moment of the season for you to stand up like Hannah did and said, enough is enough, not on my watch. And so every mother that is standing here, you're standing in the place that Hannah stood, standing at an altar. I want you to raise your hands, but not high because I don't want your hands to be tired. And hear me, as the music starts to play, I want you to start to pray. I want you to lift your voice, and I want you to pray for your son. I want you to pray for your daughter. I want you to pray them for them by name and by need. You know what they are going through. I want you to pray for that granddaughter. I want you to pray for that grandson. You know specifically what the enemy has tried to do, what the enemy has tried to do to try to keep them from you you can see them you can see the gift you can see the potential you can you can see you can see the goodness of the lord over them. i want you to start to pray i want you to start to call forth i want you to get in the middle seat i want you to intercede i want you to travail i there is a sacred moment there is a prophetic moment there is a sound that is about to be released right here from this house and I believe that when you pray all of heaven 
stands at attention to hear the cries of your heart when mothers pray when grandmothers pray when godmothers pray when women pray as we pray angels are ascending and descending as we pray there's a divine exchange that is happening in the heavens open your mouth mothers of Zion open your mouth mothers of faith open your mouth there's power in your prayers the power of a praying mother take your seat in the middle seat take your seat as an intercessor take your seat as a prayer warrior make a vow be persistent don't stop praying until you see what you heard your Samuel is coming your Samuel is coming your Samuel is coming your breakthrough is going to happen your children will be saved your children will preach your children will prophesy your children will fulfill their prophetic destiny pray church pray church pray church pray church standing for those of you that are in the congregation can you stand and stretch your hands toward these and father on this mother's day 2022 we mark this day on our calendar as the day that we take our seat as intercessors and we take our seat we take our seat we take our seat we take our seat you've you've blessed us because we've we've called and prayed for these children from heaven but now lord we we pray them back into the kingdom. And so, Father, if there is anything that you need for us to do, <laughs> Lord, if there's a posture that we have assumed that has caused our grandchildren or our children to reject you, Lord, we will ask for forgiveness, Lord. Father, we, we will we'll repent, Lord. We want to have clean hands and a pure heart, Lord. We, we don't want to be we don't want to be the hindrance to, to their view of the kingdom and to Jesus, Lord. So help us to be the mothers, the ambassadors that you have positioned for us to be, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for our for our negative looks, our negative words, our Forgive us even for our negative thoughts, Lord. We will think on these such things concerning these gifts that belong to you. And so, we prayed them from heaven to earth. 
but now we win them from earth to heaven. And so, Father, can you give us the prophetic strategy to win our children and to carry them back to the house of God and trust you that you know what's best for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, mothers, I want you to give God praise. No, I want you to give God praise like you see that child, you see that son, you see that daughter. You see the manifest. I want you to give God praise like you see the manifestation of the promise come to pass. Good. Go, you can go back to your seats and I want you to stay right here in the the attitude of of worship and prayer because I, I, I there's not a Sunday that goes by that I don't give an opportunity for someone to to give their life to Jesus and I realized that I was going through a season in my life where I knew right and I was still continuing to do wrong and somebody prayed for me and somebody waited for me and someone gave me the opportunity to surrender my my life to the lordship of Jesus Christ so while every head is bowed and everyone that knows who Jesus is that you're praying and the intercessors you've taken your place in the middle seat I want you to intercede because there's, there's, a, there's a son that's here. There's a daughter that's here. There's a mother that's here. There's a, a father that's here. There's an uncle that is here that this is their, this is their day. This is their, this is their day of salvation. And to the best of our abilities, Jubilee and leaders, if we can just silence the sanctuary and if we can limit the movement to only if it's absolutely necessary. So gatekeepers, if you could close the, the doors, I'd appreciate it. And saints of God, start to pray. If you're here with me under the sound of my voice and you're saying, Pastor, you know, if I died today, honestly... I really don't know where I would spend eternity. And heaven is real and hell is real. And you're in a what people would call the valley of decision. But today is the day where you make a decision to to follow Jesus you've never prayed the prayer of salvation but you want to pray that prayer if that's you can you raise your hand I want to pray with you don't worry about anyone looking around I'm not going to call you up to the front of the church I'm going to have you just raise your hand and I want you to I want to lead you in a prayer but if that's you just raise your hand don't be afraid don't be sure. I see that hand. God bless you. Raise it high. I see that hand. God bless you. You're watching online right now. You can just raise your hand right there. This moment is so vitally important for your future, for your children's future, for your grandchildren's future. Maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I think I prayed this prayer before, but I've I've fallen away and I've made some mistakes and I want to I want to repent. I want to come back to church or I want to dedicate my life to trying to do things differently. If that's you, if that's you, just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. 
God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. Don't worry about anyone looking around. This is between you and God. No one is going to embarrass you. No one's trying to call you out. This is between you and Almighty God, the Father. Actually, as you raise your hand, there's a party that is happening in heaven. All of heaven is rejoicing. Maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I, you can put your hand down. I want your hand to get tired. You're, you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I used to be saved or I'm not really sure. But I've, I followed some, some literature and, man, I've been confused by different cults. And, man, I, I just, I'm confused. I need salvation assurance. I'm not sure. There's someone that told me that there are many ways to God, and I believe them. But I'm here to let you know that there's only one way to God, and that is through the doorway of Jesus Christ. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. And if that's you, and if you need what I have coined, that the old mothers used to say, salvation assurance. You need assurance. Can you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. You just want to be sure. I'm not really sure, Pastor. I just, I want to be sure. I need salvation assurance or insurance. Just in case. <laughs> Raise your hand. I want to pray with you. If you lifted your hand for prayer on any three of those invitations to get saved for the very first time, to rededicate your life, or you need salvation assurance, just stand to your feet right where you are. Thank you. Saints, keep praying. Just stand to your feet right where you are. Thank you. Just stand. I, I told you I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you come to the front. I want you to stay right there. I want to pray with you right where you are. I just want you to stand to your feet right where you are. Thank you. The reason why I want you to stand to your feet is because while everyone head is bowed, I, in a few moments, I'm going to have you Open your eyes and look up, and I want to talk directly to you. I'll, I'll give you a few moments. There are some of you that raised your hands, but you're afraid to stand in. It's okay, because we've all been there. I, I've been there. I've been in a service where I, I felt someone was talking directly to me, and I'm like, are they talking to me? And I heard the Lord say, yeah, he's talking to you. For those of you that are standing, look at me. God loves you, and he has forgiven you. And he cares so much about you. He loves you so much that he decided to give his very best. He, for God so loved the world, that he gave the world his only begotten son. And if you believe in him and confess your life to him, he'll change the furniture in your life. He'll rearrange some things in your life. He's going to give you a new song and a new dance and a new freedom. Because he loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to allow you to remain the same way that you are. So for those of you that are standing, can you just lift your hands like this and pray this very simple prayer with me. If you pray this prayer and mean it from the bottom of your heart, you'll be saved. Say, dear Heavenly Father, Come on, church, let's pray it together. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for me. I admit that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge I need your help. I believe that you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for me. And I believe that on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hands. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart 
Christ is my King, my Lord and my Savior, both now and forever. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I cover these with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I cancel every single generational curse. And I release the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to rest upon them now in Jesus' name. Now, Julie, don't, don't, don't clap yet. So for those of you that are standing, can you do me a favor? Can you pull out your phone? Everyone has a phone. You're like, Pastor, I want me to pull, pull out your phone, remain standing, pull out your phone, and I want you to text the word salvation. It's right on the screen, but I'm going to read it. I want you to text the word salvation to the number 617-580-5225. Text the word salvation to 617 617- 580-5225. You text that word and someone will get back to you to share with you some really exciting news about what the next step is on your journey to being everything that God has called for you to be. Jubilee, can you put your hands together for these? No, no, come on. All of heaven. This is somebody's mother, somebody's Sister, somebody's son, somebody's, come on, all, you can do better than that. All of heaven rejoices. I don't think you heard what I said. There's a party that's happening in heaven. Why don't we just join the party right now in the earth? All of heaven rejoices when just one comes to the Father. You could be seen in the presence of the Lord.